Well, ResMed has launched its 2024 Global Sleep Survey Report, which studied over 1,500 Australians and has uncovered some of the most critical sleep challenges faced by Australians. Joining me now to break it all down is ResMed Ambassador and Australia's leading sleep expert, Olivia Arizolo. Olivia, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. Tell us, how exactly did Australia fare in this global survey? So it was so interesting. We actually found that over two thirds, 73% of Aussies were not getting the recommended eight hours of sleep. In addition, over half had been unable to sleep soundly through the night regularly. And what was really frightening was that almost a quarter, 23% had been struggling with interrupted sleep for as long as they remember. Insane. They are some uh, big figures. You mentioned there that 74% of Australians are getting less than the recommended eight to nine hours of sleep a night. Do we know why this is happening? So the survey also found that almost half of Aussies are struggling with anxiety through the night, and that is what is limiting their sleep. And in addition, one in five were struggling with sleep apnea. Now, if you are struggling with sleep apnea, for example, you are going to be waking frequently through the night, you are going to sleep really lightly, and you're going to struggle to get into that deep quality sleep we need. And if you are struggling with anxiety, that is going to leave you, again, waking frequently through the night because when you have anxiety, you have greater levels of cortisol and awakening hormone, which really limits your deep sleep. As you mentioned, the, the survey found that one in five Australians are suffering from sleep apnea. That number seems quite high. Was that a surprising statistic? Yeah, it really is because it's not something that is really discussed in widespread conversation. But if one in five people are struggling, it means that it is really an epidemic that is taking hold of Australia. And could that number potentially be higher if there are people out there that uh, possibly may not even realise that they have it? And what, what signs should people be looking out for uh, for sleep apnea? It's highly likely that so many Aussies are struggling without even realising. So the ResMed survey also found that 66% of Aussies have not consulted a medical professional for their sleep problems. And most likely they're just putting up with it because the common signs are not necessarily ones that we would connect to sleep apnea, excessive daytime fatigue, waking frequently through the night, feeling brain fog and confusion. These are signs of sleep apnea and really indicate, indicate a key problem. However, there's so many people struggling with these symptoms just on a regular basis. They're probably just putting up with it and thinking it's normal, but it's definitely not. So tell us, why is a good night's sleep so important and what can Australians be doing to get a better night's sleep and be getting those uh, eight to nine recommended hours? Okay, so why is sleep so important? So what happens in the brain is that we detoxify from a neurotoxin called beta amyloid. Beta amyloid, if it builds up in the brain, contributes to that sense of brain fog and confusion. In terms of our physical health, sleep is so important because during deep sleep, we produce human growth hormone, which is the key catalyst for cellular repair and muscle recovery. Emotionally, it helps us regulate cortisol, this awakening hormone that can otherwise be increased if we don't sleep enough. So that is why we really need to be making sure that we are getting the quality sleep we need. And in terms of how we should do that, if it's the case of sleep apnea, then ResMed has a free online sleep assessment that you can take and understand, are my symptoms normal or is this a sign of sleep apnea or something else happening in my sleep? And another really great tool is your GP and local health professional. They should be on top of it and you should definitely be taking action if you are feeling that your sleep is not what it should be. Another um, interesting stat from this survey was that over half of Australian respondents indicated that they use a digital device before bed. 
I'm sure uh, many people are guilty of this, myself included, whether that's watching TV, scrolling social media. Just exactly what impact does this have on our sleep? Okay, so typically when we are exposed to blue light, which is the light spectrum emitted from, um, you know, TVs, laptops, even Kindles, phones, ceiling lights, all lighting, this suppresses our key sleepiness hormone, melatonin. We need melatonin to fall asleep and stay asleep and sleep deeply. The brain is biologically wired to understand when there is light, artificial light or regular light, we suppress this key sleepiness hormone. And when there is not light, there is darkness, we produce it. Now, what happens is with our devices, if we're not careful, we can essentially be on them really late in the evening, two hours before bed, for example. And in this window of time, this is when we need to have absence of light in order to produce melatonin and fall asleep easy. So a lot of people are really finding it difficult to fall asleep because they're using their device in or a, a TV in the last two hours before bed. Therefore, they're suppressing melatonin. Therefore, they're not producing the hormone they need to fall and stay asleep with ease. All right, some great takeaways there. And note, put the phone away before bed. Olivia, thank you so much for your time this afternoon.